Should you refinance or buy a property using a 15-year or 30-year loan? Coming up. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ernesto and in this channel we give you health and wealth tips to help you be more successful. Now a common question I get is, should I get a 30 or a 15 year loan? And there's a lot of variables and I want to explain it as simple as possible. But bottom line, my preference is a 30 year loan. Pretty much under any circumstance. So let me explain why. Let's go to this amortization schedule here. And again, you can use uh, bankrate.com. It's a really easy to use mortgage calculator and it'll break everything down for you. So let's say we're looking at a $200,000 loan here, 30 years, which is 360 months of payment at a 4% interest. Obviously right now they're fluctuating, they're much cheaper right now. You can do this with different scenarios, but basically what they call the spread between a 30 and a 15 year is around 5%, uh, sorry, half a percent, 0.5%. So this is 4% and my monthly payment for 30 years is gonna be approximately $954.83 per month. Now that's not gonna include taxes or insurance because that varies from state to state. But the mortgage payment itself with principal and interest is gonna be about the same. Now your other option is gonna be over here, the 15 year. 15 years, 180 payments, 3.5%. As I mentioned, the spread is usually about half a percent. My monthly payment is going to be 1429 So it's almost $500 more per month. But you're going to be done with the payment in 15 years, half as long. And another thing to, con to consider is the amount of interest. Now, on the 15 year, obviously, you're going to be paying more, like I said, about 500 more a year. But look at this, the total interest. You're only going to be paying about 57,000 in interest at the end of the 15 years. Whereas on the 30 year, you're going to be paying about 143. That's more than twice as much. So people might look at that and say, wow, that's a huge difference. You know, I'd rather go with the 15 year. Well, let me show you this example I found here. And let me explain to you why you still might want to go with the 30 year. Here's a 30 year at $200,000, 4%. Payment's gonna be about $9.55 a month. Total interest, $143, as we explained before. And the 15 is right here, 3.5%. 1430 is your payment, and the total interest is 57. But the thing I like about the 30 year is let's say you wanna become a real estate investor. Um, if you tie yourself down with this big payment here, or let's say you have a business or you want to take loans out to start businesses or create a startup or something like that, that large payment is going to weigh you down quite a bit. Banks are going to look at that and going to say, look, this person is already committed to paying $14.30 a month on paper. Okay. So they're going to, it's going to reduce your borrowing capacity for 15 years. So it's gonna inhibit your ability to buy more properties, to start businesses, to create startups, to fund education, like you wanna go get a doctorate, something in STEM, whatever your choice might be, it's gonna weigh you down quite a bit. Now you might look at this and say, yeah, but I'm only gonna pay 57,000 dude compared to 143. I'm gonna save almost a hundred grand. Well, this is where option number three comes in. This is why I like 30 year loans. See on paper, when you try to get loans, if you have a 30 year, you're only going to be committed to 955. You're going to say, okay, this person still has about another $500 extra a month. They can afford to put towards buying other properties, financing debt for businesses, etc. What you can do, remember these 
properties when you buy them there's an amortization schedule here it is right here the payments 954 the principal 288 interest is 666 dollars and then the total interest accumulates every month every time you make a payment okay the balance which is 200,000 in this case is going to decline with every payment in principle and as i mentioned in our previous video you go to the end of the amortization there's zero owed on the 200,000 and you've paid a total of 143,000 here in interest so your total is going to be more like 343, 739, and 110 you're going to pay. But look at the principal you're going to, the interest you're going to pay at the end. It's three bucks. And the principal goes up to 951. And of course, the payment is consistent. Remember, the payment is 954. It's comprised of the principal and the interest. And these loans, in this case, and always, they're front-loaded. Most of the mortgage interest you're going to pay at the end. See, at the end here, you're paying principal. This is money that's going to go to pay down your actual debt. Here's your interest, which is three bucks. But at the at the beginning, that was split backwards. Look at the interest. Instead of three dollars, it's six hundred and sixty-six. Get the principal. Instead of nine hundred and change, it's two eighty-eight. It's a third. So it's going to pay down your balance much lower. So now let's say you get this 30 year and you're like, dude, I don't want to pay this extra 95,000 here that I see in this calculation. Okay. Well, over here in the beginning, you can immediately start making extra payments every month. And it has a snow snowball effect. Not just does it lower the interest for that 500 or that thousand dollars. It lowers the interest for that amount over 30 years or 28 years or whenever it is you make that payment in the payment schedule here. So the effect is compounded. That's why they call it the snowball effect. You know, if you've ever been to the snow, you drop a snowball, it starts rolling, it can turn into an avalanche and wipe out a whole city by the time it builds up in size. It's the same deal here. You can have a snowball effect basically of 30 years. So in this scenario back over here, this person had a 30 year loan and they decided, hey, I got some extra money. I want to pay it down. That's the other thing, it gives you flexibility. If you owe $1,430 a month, you can't go to the bank and pay $955. They're going to foreclose on you. You're going to lose your property. So it gives you options. You can buy it at, with a 30 year mortgage, pay $955, and then you say, hey, I don't want to pay all this, all this mortgage interest. So I'm going to pay this much more per month, which is approximately $500 extra month. If you look at it, it's only about $50 more than this one. And you're going to pay it off in 15 years. Okay. So you're going to get the same benefit, but you're not going to be tied down with this 1430 hanging around your neck, not allowing you to get money to make other investments. Now you might look at this further and you might say, Hey, well, wait a minute. Sure, I'm going to save, you know, quite a bit here, like 75000 But this is still about, I don't know, $9,000 more. I don't even want to pay that 9000 Okay. Well, check this out. You can still do the 30-year. And remember the snowball effect. Instead of paying fourteen fifty nine, dollars you can pay approximately fifteen thirty, dollars An extra 50 bucks, and you'll pay the same amount of interest as this one. And you'll actually pay it in less than 15 years. You'll be done like in 13 years or something. So you'll pay the same amount of interest, but you'll pay it off faster, about 13 years, which will free you up to do other investments. But you'll only show 955 of an actual liability on your credit and counting against your income. So you're going to be allowed to do a lot of investing. So you can get all these benefits with the 30 year it gives you a lot of flexibility it allows you to pay it in 30 years 20 years 15 years 10 years whatever you want and you could save all the interest but again you're not locked into this you know i don't like the idea of being locked into these big payments you know banks look at that and they say hey this guy's locked in for 1400 they don't like that <laughs> they'd rather see you locked in for 955 but it really caused a lot of problems with flexibility 
in, in terms of interest, like I said, you can easily overcome that by just paying a little more. If you look at this, fourteen thirty a month, you could say, yeah, but I'm going to pay fifteen thirty here. Yeah, you're going to pay fifteen thirty to get the same amount of interest. You're going to pay in like thirteen years instead of thirty or fifteen. So it's actually even better than the fifteen year loan. So these are some huge benefits to keep in mind. Um, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to go into more details about this. Uh, just comment below. And if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for listening. Bye-bye.